Hey y'all, welcome back to the Fire and Water Cooking Channel. I'm Darren. Today I'm going to do something just a little bit different. I'm going to show you what you can do with some of these cheap uh, prime rib roasts that are on sale right around Christmas and Thanksgiving. I actually picked up a couple today. Um, our local grocery store, they were at $5.88 a pound for choice grade um, rib roasts. So there was a limit two, so we bought two. <laughs> And what I'm going to do with these, and since I already have a prime rib I already got ready that we're going to cook for Christmas, I'm actually going to show you what you can do with these to make them even better. So I'll be right back. All right, guys. Um, rib eyes, um, prime rib, rib roasts, they all come from the same primal, big cut of the cow. So when somebody says prime rib, rib roast, ribeye steaks, bone in, bone out, they're all talking about the same meat. It's just a different, the way they cut it is different. These particular um, rib roasts happen to be uh, USDA choice grade. And even though they're USDA choice, you can still be a prime rib because of the, where it's cut on the primal section of the uh, ribeye. This particular one is not called prime rib because it's probably cut from different sets of the bones. Um, usually it's closer to the front of the roast of the primal is what's considered the prime rib area. So it's the first three or four bones of the uh, primal. So this particular one, they didn't label it as prime rib, just rib roast, but very similar um, throughout the whole uh, rib section. But what I'm going to show you what we can do with this, um, of course, I picked up two of these today and don't want to have a roast every time. Actually, you can cut these into your uh, ribeye steaks and I've already done it with one. just kind of want to show you what I've done. Very simple. These particular roasts come already um, with the ribs kind of cut, removed, but put back on and they're tied up. So I'll show you that when I get to this one. But if you can see here what I've done, I just cut this rib roast into ribeye steaks. About one and a half inches, close to two inch steaks. Then I have the, these are back ribs and I have that separated here and a couple more steaks. And I'm gonna cut this one as well into steaks. So what that'll give me, it'll give me two smaller racks of beef ribs back ribs so I can cook later on at a, at a meal for a meal and then I got these steaks this will probably get me uh, three steaks it's a little bit smaller than this roast was but it'll get me three three or four meals out of this these two roasts here so I'm gonna go ahead I'll be right back and I'll cut this one up all right all my hands are all washed up I'm gonna go ahead just take this out of the package like I said these were bought today on sale they were uh, 588 a pound for a bone-in rib roast, which is a very good deal. And as I said, these are already tied up with butcher twine. And all I'm going to do, since I don't want this as a roast anymore, I've got the ones that I'm going to cook as a roast already ready in the freezer, ready to go for Christmas. I'm going to go ahead and take this, take the string off, and that frees up these bones for the ribs and I'm going to stick these in a separate bag. I'm going to season these up, stick these in a separate sous vide bag so that I can have those for a meal um, down the road a piece. And that leaves me with this roast section which is just pretty much your prime rib. And what the uh, the convenience of those um, butcher twine, it kind of, they already spaced it out about an inch and a half to two inches apart. So that actually makes it really easy to cut into steaks if you want, but just make sure you shape it, make it as even as possible. If you can see, it looks like this was cut a little uneven, but I'm gonna try to push it together. So when I cut these into steaks, I want the steaks to be as even as possible throughout the whole thing. So I've got those rope marks right here to kind of guide me, and I'll kind of use those as a just as a basic guide and I'll just kind of start and I'll just kind of adjust it 
as I'm cutting just to make sure it stays pretty consistent all the way through. You want to stay in the same line that you're cutting. You don't want to have multiple cuts on this. So there you go. That's my first one. I kind of press it down, even it out. And you'll see that's about a good inch and a half most of the way down. Do the same thing on this one. Just kind of make sure. Use that rope uh, as a guide there, the rope marking. And just kind of make sure it stays the one shape the whole way. You can leave the ropes on there if you want, the uh, butcher twine when you're cutting it. If it makes it easier for you, I just find it gets in my way. And there you go. Now I've got out of this rib roast, I've got three decent ribeye steaks, a set of um, beef back ribs out of those two roasts. I think it was a total of um, one was like $32, one was like $26. So I've got four ribeye steaks in this one, three decent good sized ribeye steaks on this one, and two racks of back ribs. So that's it guys. Pretty easy. Like I said, this is a great time because you can't find uh, choice ribeye steaks out there for $5.99 or $5.88 a pound like this was. So usually you're talking over $7, $8, $9 a pound. So if you can find them, freeze them up, buy them up, buy as many as you can get when they're $5.99 or so a pound, put them in the freezer, cut them up into steaks. Um, it's just a great, uh, great way to get some good quality beef at a really great price. So, well, that's it guys. That's all I'm doing today. I'm going to go ahead and season these up, vacuum seal them in a freezer bag, and then we'll have these at a meal down the road. You'll probably see them in another video I'm going to do, um, down the road a piece. So thanks for watching. Make sure you like us, like this video, subscribe, find the follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks guys.